Good morning. Welcome to the morning prayer meeting. If you have the Bible, look at the Romans chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. First, I thank my God to Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness how constantly I remember you. In my prayers at all times, and I pray that now at last by God's will, the way may be opened for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, uh, that you and I may be maturely encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to do unaware for brothers that I planned many times to come to you, but have been uh, prevented from doing so until now in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated to both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, righteous will live by faith. This morning, I will share with you, according to Romans chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. I think it's the most important scripture you can see, Romans 1, verse 17. This is a fundamental scripture to open the Protestant by Martin Luther and John Calvin, John Knox, Zwingli, or this Lipomo in 16th century. Especially Martin Luther, he was a priest in Roman Catholic. But you know, he loved to uh, follow Jesus. He loved to you know, live properly in the eyes of the law. But he can't. Why? Because of the doctrine of Roma, Roman Catholic is, a, is a strongly you know, damaged the people against the, the, um, the Bible. But he saw Romans one seventeen, The righteous will live by faith, not by your deed. You never earn the salvation by your own your will, by your strength, by your own you know, righteous work. No, only by faith you can get the salvation. But you can see from verse 8, he said, I thank my God because of <clears throat> you guys, you have a faith is being reported all over the world. Yes, Paul, he thanks me to God because of their faith. You know, today you can focus on the one word, faith, F-A-I-T-H, faith. Faith is most important, do you understand? Because I have faith, yeah, to share the gospel of Lord Jesus right now. If I don't have a faith, you know, I never get salvation. It's nothing to do with the, with the Lord Jesus. Because I have a faith in Jesus, not because of my good work or my some uh, my own job or what no, no, it's nothing to do with these things. Only faith in Christ Jesus is most important. And Paul said, I thank my God because of you have a faith is being reported all over the world. And verse nine and ten say you know, he said, God whom I served with all my heart. Yeah, he, he preaching the gospel of Son Jesus. And then he said, Jesus is my witness. Uh, how much did you know, constantly I remember you guys, Romans, uh, Christian. Yeah, they are mixed. Jews and the Gentiles, they mix together in the Church of Rome. 
And they, he just included the, you know, Christian in Rome, the Rome. And then verse 11, he loved to, and verse 10 actually, and the end of verse 10, he said, God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. He loved to see this uh, Christian in Rome. <laughs> and he prayed always, he might pray that in all time, he said. All, at all times, I pray that now, at last, by God's will, God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. He prayed to God, Lord God, open the door to see the Christian in Rome. That was his prayer. And the verse 11, he loved to, I long, long to see you that I may impart to you but some spiritual gift. Paul, he has got some spiritual gift to, to, to supporting for them and encourage them to make you strong. It's wonderful to have a spiritual gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And verse 12, he is so humble. He say, I may be maturely encouraged by each other's faith. I don't want to just raise my hand for you guys. Or, no, you have to encourage each other's that kind of uh, humble letter to Romans. Yeah, he encouraged them. And uh, yeah, actually, verse 13, he he loved to he loved to be to Rome. Yeah, he loved to do it, but uh, the the way is close. He say, many times to come to you, he say. <coughs> he made a plan, many times, but door is closed. And, um, and then, you know, he say, uh, when I come, I, I might see a harvest among you guys. Yeah, just as I have a head among the other Gentiles. He saw the amazing harvest in, in the Gentile area, in Asia or some other area in Greece. Uh, he, he saw the many Gentile people come to Lord Jesus, but he loved to see a great uh, harvest in in Rome. And then, you know, when you pray to God, if the door is closed, uh, not only God closed the door, sometimes, two times, Satan closed the door. Do you know that? If you look at the 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, verse 18. He, Paul, he loved to visit the Thessalonian Christian, but uh, Satan closed the door. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly, I, Paul, did again and again. Paul, he said, I tried to see you guys, all the guys in Thessalonians. Again and again, but Satan stopped us. You see, <laughs> who stopped? Not God, Satan. Satan uh, stopped <coughs> us. Therefore, you need to understand how, you know, Satan closed the door, or, you know, of course, Satan is still working on 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 on, on, on the hands of God. Do you understand? God is powerful. You cannot compare with Satan. God is the Almighty God, control everything. Even sometimes, um, of course, God closed the door. Why? You know, Paul, he wanted to go to preaching in Asia, but God is the one to close the door. He, God asked Paul to go to Europe. He just know. He knew. But another time, you know, to see the Thessalonian Christian, Satan stopped us. He loved to see them. Therefore, as you are man and woman of God, you knew. Is it God close the door or Satan <laughs> did not stop you guys to go, don't go there. But therefore, we need to pray. When you pray to God, yeah, continually pray. When you pray to God, God will open the door. God will intervene. Yeah, God will intervene. Even Satan tried to stop you guys, don't go. But God will open the door miraculously. Therefore, you and I need to wake up. Yeah. According to the 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18, Paul, he wanted to see the Thessalonian Christian to see them again and again, but Satan stopped. You see? Yep, therefore, uh, we trust in Jesus. Uh, keep on praying. Keep on praying. You know, for me, I keep on praying for all the saints, all the congregation. Normally, I pray 300 to 400 people. 
daily. I intercede for them. They don't recognize I pray for them or not. They don't know. But I, I myself pray. Do you know that I pray for Brother Badalomi, our branch pastor, Kismu Shepherd Church? I pray. I pray for people in Kismu. I pray for our, you know, the workers, co-workers, and let God give them uh, anointing. Therefore, pray. When you pray, God will open the door. God will open the door. Yeah. Look at the verse 14 and 15. Do you know, he's saying, verse 14, one, sorry, Romans chapter 1, verse 14, I'm obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to wise and foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. He loved to share the good news of Lord Jesus for people in Rome, especially Greeks, which means Gentiles, non-Greeks, which means, you know, Jews. You know, Greeks and Jews, they need to hear the gospel of Lord Jesus. That is why Paul said, I'm eager to share the good news for all you guys in, at Rome. And um, why Paul speak like this? You know, when Paul, when Paul become a born again Christian, he received a calling. What is his calling? I can share again and again. Uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 15. This is a God spoke to him. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 say, But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my names before the Gentiles and their kings, and before the people of Israel. God already spoke to Paul. You're going to preach the gospel to Gentiles, to kings, and to the uh, people of Israel, which means Jewish people. You see? He already received the calling. Therefore, you know, he keep the word of the Lord. When God says something, don't lose it. Keep it. That is why he loved to go to Rome. Especially, Rome is the most powerful city 2,000 years ago. Biggest city in the world in 2,000 years ago is Rome. Around 1 million population. 1 million. And then also, so big city in, 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 in Asia, Epicious. Epicious is a half a million population. And um, yes, yeah, quite a big city. And then this uh, uh, long. And he loved to share the goodness of Lord Jesus. And then verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Lord Jesus. Because why? It is the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes. You see, the gospel of Lord Jesus, yeah, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. Why I say it is the power of God, especially for the salvation of everyone. This power of God. What is the power of God? Gospel of Jesus. Gospel of Jesus is the power of God. This power of God is the uh, is uh, for the uh, uh, for the salvation of everyone. That is why it's so amazing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. Uh, don't be ashamed to be a born again Christian. Yes, 2,000 years ago, anybody become a born again Christian, terrible persecution, terrible hardship. There's a not equal you know, chance if you become a born again in, in early church. But they never ashamed. Even now, if you are if you living in Muslim country, I mean Middle East, like Pakistan, Iran, and then Saudi Arabia, or wherever, if you are born again Christian, yeah, yeah, and in this uh, Islamic country, then you can get uh, some good job in that country. Why? Because most of all the governors and prime minister and president, they are. Uh, you know, Muslims, but they don't give the proper job for born again Christian in the Islamic country. Therefore, you know, people they they believe in Jesus secretly. But if you if you coming out and you can say that I'm a born again Christian and follow Jesus in Islamic country, is it quite dangerous? 
Yeah, I know some, some Christian, you know, MP, Christian governors in Pakistan, they, they died. It, they died. Some people died because of their belief. Yeah. But Paul said, I am not ashamed of gospel. I'm not. I'm not. But today, look at verse 17. You know, 17, you can see what is a gospel or righteousness from God is revealed. Praise God. You know, God revealed this uh, uh, gospel or righteousness uh, to Paul uh, from God. And he said, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. You see? It is, that is, by faith from first to last. As I told you earlier, uh, please remember the faith. F-A-I-T-H, faith. Yeah? And then just it's written, the righteous will live by faith. Shall we live by faith? Not by work. Live by faith. Live by faith. In, do, do you understand? It is uh, through faith, you know, you can see them uh, from, uh, by faith, from, by faith from first to last. Another translation say, yeah, it is uh, through faith from the beginning to end. Why? The faith is very important. Everything by faith, actually. By faith, yeah, from beginning to end. Yeah? By faith, you come and see now what I'm preaching now. By faith, you hear the word of the Lord. By faith, you become a pastor. Yeah? A minister or missionary or whatever. By faith. Therefore, do you know, you have to live by faith. Do you know, the, the Bible says, righteous, which means you are righteous, yeah? By the blood of Lord Jesus. Righteous shall live by faith. Yeah? If you look at the Galatians 2.20, you, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I no longer live, but Christ lives me. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 say, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And after that, it's very important. The life I live in the body, which means he live in this world. Yeah, Paul say, the life I live in the body, I live by faith, you see. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Are you the one to live by faith in the Son of God? Why still you don't live by faith? You have to live. You have to live by faith in the Son of God. Yeah? If you live, if you live by faith in the Son of God, that means you no longer live, but Christ lives in me. What does it mean, I no longer live, but Christ live, lives in me? Live by faith. Live what Bible say. Live what Jesus say. Live according to the will of Father in heaven. Live according to the word of the Lord. Faith from hearing, hearing by the word of God. Therefore, live by faith means live by word. Live by word. Yeah. Live by his promised word. Yeah. Do you know um, how can we become righteous? You know? God gave the Ten Commandment to Moses. But before Moses, before Moses, can you become righteous? Yes. Before Moses received the Ten Commandment, how? Look at the Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, Abraham, yeah, he didn't receive the uh, you know, Ten Commandment. Moses received it. Look. Abraham 15 verse 6, Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. You see, because Abraham believed in God, God called him, he became a uh, righteousness. You see, you are righteous because of your faith in God. Not because you obeyed the old 613 laws, no. You obeyed the Ten Commandments, no. Because of, you have faith in Christ. You are righteous. This is the secret key. You know, that is why Martin Luther, he confessed his, all his sins and then cried to God. You know, he did with all his you know, strength, his uh, life to get, uh, you know, salvation, to get, uh, you know, righteousness. 
but you never become a righteousness by your own effort, your own work, but faith, the righteous, you become righteous. How? How? By faith. The righteous shall live by faith. Yeah, you become righteous by the blood of Lord Jesus, or do you live by faith? If you live by faith, yeah, you are righteous. You never become righteous by our own things or observing the law. No. Look, Abraham, he just believed in God, and then God created him as righteousness. Therefore, you and, my, you and, and myself uh, believe in the Lord Jesus, and then I live by faith in the Son of God, in the Son of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. And then the righteous live by faith. And not by our own work. Not by our own effort. Not by the, <coughs> the other things. But just shall live by faith. Lord, we thank you. Because we believe in Jesus, we become righteousness. And that, Lord, we thank you. We saw the Abraham and believe in God. He, God created him as a righteousness. Lord, we believe in Jesus, and you created us as your uh, righteousness. We thank you, we follow Jesus by faith. The body I have uh, to live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me, who gave himself for me. Lord, we thank you. We no longer live, but Christ lives in us. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Live by faith today even. Have a wonderful day today. Bye now.